Antarctica, a frozen, desolate, and mysterious wasteland. Our fifth largest continent, but the only continent with no permanent human inhabitants. A place international law forbids you from visiting unannounced. What are they hiding down there? Shortly after the end of World War II, U.S. Naval Rear Admiral Richard Byrd led an expedition to the frozen wasteland. Was it to locate and destroy a secret Nazi base? Was it to locate and return the crash-landed remains of an alien spacecraft? Or while there, did Richard Byrd locate and enter the entrance to the hollow Earth? Yeah, buckle up kiddos, this one gets fucking weird. I'm King Trout, and my mommy says I'm special. Sit back, relax, and enjoy as I tell you the story of, and many conspiracy theories surrounding, Operation High Jump. Before we get into examining the conspiracy theories surrounding Operation High Jump, let's start by explaining what it was. In December of 1946, a U.S. Naval Task Force consisting of 4,700 men, 70 ships, and 33 aircraft being led by U.S. Naval Rear Admiral... Rear Admiral? Like, but... Richard Byrd was sent to Antarctica on an expedition. Their mission was simple. Kind of. They were there for a multitude of reasons. To collect meteorological and scientific data related to the polar regions of Earth, as well as to test the effectiveness of military equipment and troops in the polar regions. Why would they be doing that? Well, because a lot of people in powerful positions in the late 1940s in the United States of America had this inkling feeling that maybe those Soviet allies of ours weren't going to be allies for much longer. Spoiler alert, they were right. The belief was that were a war to break out with the Soviet Union, nearly all of the fighting would take place within the Arctic Circle in places like Greenland and Canada and Alaska and obviously the USSR. But the Arctic Circle's at the north part of the world. Why were they down south? That's because it's 1946 and the U.S. is still technically allied with the Soviet Union. Everybody kind of had the feeling that we weren't going to be friends for too much longer, but the notion of you know, training thousands of men in the open, in the conditions you would expect to fight them in, wasn't really good optics. So instead, they sent this expedition to the South Pole. It was kind of a two birds, one stone type of deal, too, because the U.S. also had the intentions on this mission of testing the feasibility of establishing a permanent base on Antarctica. And along those same lines, the U.S. might have had a little bit of a vested interest in dipping its toes into some territorial claims on the continent. Byrd was specially selected to lead the expedition because this wasn't going to be his first or second expedition to Antarctica, or his third. It was going to be his fourth expedition to Antarctica. This being at a time when the number of people who had visited the continent was less than 100. And keep in mind, Antarctica wasn't discovered until 1820. People had suspected there was probably something at the bottom of the Earth, but it was not confirmed to have existed until 1820. Prior to that, there was an entire continent on this earth that was essentially an urban legend. Byrd was an experienced adventurer and explorer. He was a decorated war veteran. He had a Medal of Honor, among many, many other awards. He was the first man to fly a plane across each of the poles, although there's some debate about that now, but his life story is bananas. The dude is crazy. Like, you, you be very easy to make an entire video just about his life story, but we're here to talk about high jump and other crazy sh**. Regardless, in December of 1946, the men made their way to Antarctica to establish a base camp. Antarctica is the coldest place on Earth. Why would they go there in December? Because it's in the southern hemisphere, you dummy. You didn't pay attention in fifth grade? Summertime in December down there. It's the warmest time of year for them. You dummy. But regardless of the fact that December is a summer month in Antarctica, Antarctic summers are built different. The temperature during this time tended to float between minus 5 and minus 20 degrees. Obviously, that's in Fahrenheit, the correct unit of measurement to measure temperature in when you're a human being. What is that in commie units? I don't know. I have no idea. Why would you establish a system of measuring temperature based on water? I am not water. Oh, King Trout, the human body's mainly composed of water. How relevant is it to you on a daily basis that you need to know whether or not water will freeze or boil at the temperature it is outside? Never! It's a stupid system. It's so dumb, and I hate it. 25? Oh, it's hot out. Oh, 23? Oh, freezing cold. Stupid system of measurement for human beings. I digress. Bird and the men arrive in Antarctica and establish their base camp, which they named Little America 4. Can you guess what Bird named his base camps on the first three excursions he made to Antarctica? 
Once the base camp was established, the men set about conducting scientific and meteorological tests. Tens of thousands of photographs were taken by the men for documentation. Byrd took many of these on flights he would make around the continent, including one flight where his return was delayed for three hours. Once the men had conducted what they believed was sufficient enough research, they packed things up and headed home for America. In 1958, a similar Navy excursion was held near Antarctica, where they launched three nuclear weapons. Some of the documentation related to the findings of Operation High Jump are still sealed to this day. What did they find? And now, on to the conspiracy theories. We'll start with the wacky and work backwards. Some believe that while on this expedition, Byrd entered the Hollow Earth, where he met with a super race of Aryans, who were led by a man called the Master, and were pissed off that humans had discovered nuclear weapons. The sources for this theory range from, trust me bro, to a supposed secret diary of Byrd's that was coincidentally published years after his death. In this supposed diary of Byrd's, he met with an Aryan super race led by a man named the Master uh, in a crystal city inside the Hollow Earth, um, and... Yeah, they told him it was his duty to inform mankind not to use nuclear weapons because it would ultimately lead to humanity's destruction. And there was a third world war coming. Yeah. Did Bird enter the Hollow Earth and keep that secret for the entirety of his life? Or did somebody make up that bullshit story to sell books? I don't know, but I'm going to guess probably the latter. Ah, but King Trout, I hear those of you who haven't been taking your schizophrenia medication saying, what about the flight of birds where his return was delayed by three hours? What happened then? Well, if you believe Bird and his co-pilot, yeah, he had a co-pilot for this entire encounter, who, you know, he didn't write a secret diary or anything, and the physical evidence of the plane itself, uh, they lost an engine while they were out doing their reconnaissance. That slowed their return. Is the Earth hollow, and did Bird discover this to be the case? I don't know, I can't say for certain, but all signs point to f no. We all know the Earth is convex and carried through space on a giant turtle's back. And if you're one of the people who believe in this hollow Earth theory, the bugs in your skin are real. They're real and you need to get them out from under your skin. Claw them out now, get them out from inside your skin. Get them out now. Were the men sent to Antarctica to recover a crash-landed alien ship? And did they encounter UFOs? Most of the evidence for this theory is hinged upon some first-hand but mostly second-hand reports of the men who were on the expedition who saw either UFOs or other strange objects. So far as the second-hand accounts go, we can throw all those in the garbage because any story that starts with, one time a guy told me, is usually horse especially when it's about aliens. But of the men who were actually on the excursion and reported seeing UFOs, did some of them make it up for clout? Probably. It was very popular to report UFO sightings at this time. There was actually a giant rash of UFO sightings right around this time. It's a very interesting story. Perhaps, mm, perhaps I'll tell it sometime. That being said, did some of the men actually see unidentified flying objects while they were there? Probably. I completely believe them. I've seen a UFO. I know tons of people who've seen UFOs. But it's worth noting that in none of these first-hand accounts do any of the men report that they were there to collect a crashed spaceship. That only comes up in the second-hand accounts. Again, I heard a story from a guy. Another piece of evidence that's often brought up when it comes to this theory is a quote from Admiral Byrd himself in a Chilean newspaper while the expedition was on its way to Antarctica. When asked why the expedition was occurring in the first place, Byrd stated that he didn't want to scare anyone, but he believed in the near future there could be very legitimate threats of attacks by flying objects. From the poles. When he said this, did he mean that humanity was at risk of attacks from alien spacecraft based in Antarctica? Maybe. Or when he said this, did he mean that America was at risk of attacks from the Soviets and Chinese using planes and missiles flying over the North Pole? I'll leave that for you to decide, but probably the second one. Are aliens real? Statistically, probably yes. I believe in aliens. Like I said earlier, I've, I've seen a UFO. Like, I don't doubt that these guys probably saw weird sh**. Was the true purpose of the expedition to collect a crash-landed alien spacecraft? 
I doubt it. There's really no evidence besides somebody saying they heard a guy say that that was the purpose of it. Plus, it doesn't matter, because a couple months after they got back, one crash landed in Roswell, New Mexico, either way. Is there a secret alien base in Antarctica from which they will launch their attack on humanity in their War of the Worlds? No, you silly goose, the secret base is in the ocean. And there are a couple more modern pieces of evidence related to the presence of aliens in Antarctica, such as this photo from Google Images, which allegedly shows a crash-landed alien spacecraft. An alleged alien spacecraft that crashed right next to this mountain. Definitely is not just a rock or piece of ice that fell off of the mountain and rolled down it. And by the way, that's on South Georgia Island, which is nowhere near where the expedition took place. But what about this pyramid in Antarctica? Or pyramidish shaped mountain, if you ask me. Uh, apparently there's like a geological reason why some mountains are shaped this way, like the Alps, for example, are, are kind of similarly shaped. Uh, I don't really fully understand or care to understand how that works, but um, the one kid who's on here who needs to cut his hair and has the dirt stash, he's pretty good at explaining those sorts of things. It's also usually the result of pareidolia, which is the phenomenon where humans place higher meaning upon things um, that kind of don't really have any meaning otherwise. It's the same fundamental principle as to why, like, inkblot Rorschach tests all look like either two guys kissing or my dad being disappointed in me. Completely unrelated pareidolia story. I don't even know why I'm putting this in the video. But when I was a little kid, uh, the house I grew up in had a linen closet where the door was, like, directly in front of the toilet where you'd sit down if you were doing number two. And in the wood grain of that door um, was, like, this face. It looked exactly like that. It was terrifying. Like, every time I took a dump as a kid, I would just stare at the floor because I did not want to make eye contact with the scary wood grain face. Oh yeah, we're, we're talking about uh, Operation High Jump. Now it's time for the interesting one. Disclaimer before we get started here. Uh, YouTube really hates it for monetization purposes when you say the name of the political party that starts with the letter N and ends with an I that ran Germany from 1933 to 1945. So, uh, with that in mind, and the fact that, uh, I'm doing this because I enjoy making money, money, I will refer to them as World War II Germans. So, the story goes like this. In 1939, the World War II Germans sent a group to establish territory in Antarctica that they named New Schwabenland, or New Swabia in English, named after a region in Bavaria. While there, the World War II Germans built a secret base. In July of 1945, months after the war had ended in Europe, a German U-boat arrived in Argentina to surrender. In August of the same year, another U-boat arrived. This, of course, being after they made a pit stop in Antarctica to drop off high-ranking World War II German party leaders and scientists or stolen gold or the angry Charlie Chaplin impersonator's ashes. It kind of depends on who you ask, but one of those things. Kindly, kindly, that guy. I'm, I'm not even going to dignify him by saying his name, but I think you know what I'm talking And these World War II German holdouts remain there to this day or they were nuked by the Americans in 1958. Kind of a broad spectrum of possibilities there, but it, again, depends on who you ask. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, depending on who you ask, again, they may or may not have access to alien technology. So let's break it down. In 1939, the World War II Germans did indeed send an exploratory group to potentially establish a German colony or territory on the Antarctic continent. To build a secret base? Probably not. They didn't build anything when they were there. Uh, again, it was to establish a German territory on the continent, primarily because they caught wind that Norway was going to do the same very soon. Why would Norway do that? Whales. Not the country, the animal. The primary reason the Germans wanted to establish a territorial claim on the continent was for whaling purposes. Did they do this for butter? No, they did it for margarine. I can't believe it's not butter. Due to fairly recent at the time discoveries surrounding gasoline and its production, whale oil had plummeted in value, but it was still used to make margarine, and Germany was a huge consumer of margarine, largest consumer in Europe. Their main supplier of whale oil and whale products at the time was Norway, and Norway had just sanctioned World War II Germany 
and cut them off from their sweet, sweet, precious whale juice. So as a two-for-one f*** you to Norway, Germany would establish their territory in Antarctica in the same region that Norway intended to claim, while they would also still be able to obtain their precious whale juice. The Germans never established a permanent settlement on the continent, nor did it matter since war broke out that same year. They withdrew their expedition and shortly thereafter were occupying Norway. Didn't have to worry about whaling anymore. The tap for whale juice was unlimited and flowing. To keep things moving chronologically, during World War II, the British SAS established secret bases on Antarctica in Operation Tabarin. What was the purpose of this secret wartime mission by the British? Well, it was to monitor German activities in the area. This is sometimes used as evidence of the purported secret World War II German base on Antarctica. But that's just what they'd have you believe. Literally, they, they wanted people to believe that's why they were down there. The British publicly stated to neutral Chile and Argentina that the reason that they were down there was to monitor any German activities in the area since they were at war with Germany. But what they were actually doing was keeping an eye on Argentina and Chile, who had the intention of staking a claim in Antarctica. Also, for a lot of very complicated geopolitical reasons involving the Falkland Islands, which we are not going to get into here. I will not eat a single morsel of food until Margaret Thatcher is dead and buried. She died three weeks ago. Can this information be trusted? I don't know, but here's where the uh, Germans are allegedly at in Antarctica, and here's where the British were at. Notice how they're astronomically closer to Chile and Argentina? Hmm. So we fast forward a little bit to a few months after the war in Europe had ended. July of 1945, a German U-boat arrives at port in Buenos Aires, Argentina. A month later, in August, another arrives. After the war had ended, did they make a pit stop in Antarctica to drop off either party leaders or stolen gold or the ashes of the angry mustache man? According to a German sailor who claims to have been aboard, yes. The main problem with this dude's story is that A, it's not corroborated by anyone, and B, according to both German and Argentinian records, he was not on either of those submarines. The first submarine to arrive in Buenos Aires, both according to their logs and the mission that they were deployed on, was hanging out outside of New York City. The crew decided that they wouldn't like to surrender to the Americans and would rather go to neutral Argentina. Even if traveling at full speed, it would have been mathematically impossible for the submarine to have traveled from New York City to Antarctica up to Buenos Aires. But what about the second submarine that arrived in Buenos Aires a full month later? Well, they were stationed in the Baltic Sea, so it took them a month longer to get to Buenos Aires, and it also would have been mathematically impossible to make a pit stop in Antarctica. But either of them could have hypothetically made a pit stop somewhere else in South America. Just saying. <laughs> and also, remember how at the beginning we talked about how December is summertime in Antarctica? July and August are wintertime in Antarctica. The ice shelf surrounding the continent during this time of year extended 1,500 miles away from the land itself. And while there is evidence of German U-boats sailing under icebergs and ice shelves, 1,500 miles would have been too far for them to travel because they wouldn't have been able to breathe. German U-boats during World War II didn't have carbon scrubbers or rebreathing equipment. They obtained all their fresh air through the use of a snorkel. The snorkel would not have been able to penetrate the ice shelf. So then, as the story goes, to continue chronologically, 1947, Bird and the boys are sent down on Operation High Jump to confirm the existence of this World War II German base. Except they were on the opposite side of the entire continent from where the supposed secret base is. It'd be like if there was an alleged secret World War II German base in northern Sweden, and so they sent a team to investigate in Spain. But what about those nukes I was talking about? Well, according to some, upon the discovery and confirmation of the World War II German base in Antarctica, America nuked them. Eleven years later, for some reason. In late August and early September of 1958, the U.S. detonated three nuclear weapons near Antarctica. Not on Antarctica. And according to some, these detonations were used to wipe out those pesky World War II Germans once and for all. Now, the closest of those three detonations to Antarctica was 1,500 miles. The three explosions were airburst detonations and occurred over the Atlantic Ocean. If it's just the middle of the ocean, why would they detonate nukes out there? Well, it was 1958, and just a year prior, the Soviets had launched Sputnik. The airburst detonations were an attempt by the Americans to disrupt Soviet satellite systems by creating a... 
particle barrier of radiation in the stratosphere. But listen, I tried, tried to understand what they were attempting to do, but I don't have a degree in particle physics. So it, basically, they were trying to like make a an effect thing that would... They're putting a bunch of radiation up in space to fuck with Soviet satellites. Also, if I understood, like, the conclusion of that event well enough, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, the theory they were testing, like, didn't even turn out to be true. They just, like, launched nukes into space. Yeah, if it works, it works. But, again, I don't have a degree in particle physics, so that went straight over my head. Have you also noticed that each stage of this story has taken place thousands of miles from the other parts of the story? Like, aside from everything else, just geographically speaking, all this shit completely falls apart when you put in just the minimum amount of effort into researching any of it. It's like, oh, where are the secret he's hiding? We gotta go get him. Oh, well, either here, or there, or there, or inside the Earth, or in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, depending on what part of the story we're on. Listen, I love a good conspiracy. That's why I'm here with you, right now. Do I believe any of the things I've elaborated on so far? Not really. I think the concept that there's a secret Nazi base in Antarctica where they have alien technology is pretty fucking stupid. King Trout, are you for real saying that some high-ranking Nazi officials didn't escape Germany at the end of World War II and go into hiding? That's not at all what I said. I just don't think they're chilling with aliens down in Antarctica. I mean, we have proof that some did. You know where none of them went? Antarctica. So where does this theory come from, and why does it persist to this day? I personally have a couple of theories. Um, at best, just human intrigue. I mean, a secret hidden base of Nazi holdouts from World War II hiding in Antarctica, and they have access to a secret world. It sounds like the plot of a fucking movie. And at worst, it's a case of weapons-grade copium. The whole theory started with one book by one man, was an alleged Nazi himself. Yeah, the fucking nerd couldn't take the L and move on, so instead he made up a story about how, um, actually, uh, the Nazis were so cool that they, uh, have a secret base in Antarctica and they're all still down there because they didn't lose the war. And actually, they're so cool that they have, uh, alien spaceships and stuff down there too. It literally sounds like the shit a fifth grader would make up. Do I think that he just made it all up? Truthfully, yeah. The real question for me is whether or not he did that to profiteer off of human curiosity, which is one thing entirely, or if he did it to create a piece of pro nazi cope propaganda. And speaking of propaganda, I made a whole video about propaganda. You can check it out here. When I'm finished, I'm not done here yet. You watch this whole video, and then you go watch that one. Then how come some of the documents related to Operation High Jump haven't been released, even to this day? Listen, I don't trust the government at all. That's pretty well established. Everyone knows that about me. Are they hiding things from us? Absolutely. Are you serious? Of course they are. All the time. Every day. Are they hiding a secret Nazi base in Antarctica from us? Probably not. Then what's in those documents that they are hiding from us? Well, obviously I don't know. Neither do you. My guess is as good as yours. But my guess would be... Uh, some scientific information that would jeopardize our national security in one way or another. As much as what I'm about to say may physically pain some of you to hear. To be rational and real and realistic, you have to understand, and everyone does, that um, there are people on this planet who would like for me to be dead, aside from the multitude of other reasons, uh, for the sole fact that I'm an American. There are people on this planet who would love nothing more than for the United States to cease to exist. And that being said, I understand that there are some pieces of information that maybe not everybody has to know. So if, for example, the Navy learned something scientifically valuable that would put us in danger if our enemies learned it during Operation High Jump, I don't know how missiles travel over the poles or something like that, that information is of no value to me personally, if it was available to everyone, but if a Russian or Chinese missile engineer came across it, it might be incredibly valuable to them and also put my life in jeopardy. I kind of understand why you need to keep some things a secret. 
Hi, sorry to interrupt. I'm in the middle of editing the video you're in the middle of watching, and I came across a letter from FDR basically saying exactly what I'm saying here. There there are still parts of this information that are confidential because they found out that would be harmful if they were public information in regards to our national security. And also, apparently, the information uh, like a, from their findings was scattered everywhere, and that was pissing a lot of people off, so he had it all um, kind of consolidated and archived. But, yeah, I'll put all the sources for all the stuff that I used for this video in the description. Chill out, dude. Freaking cat's going crazy. Say hi to the people, Ziggy. Okay. So if it were that hypothetical scientific data, that's of no value to me when the government could be releasing things like Epstein's client list. Ugh. But then why can't you go to Antarctica? Well, you can. You just have to go on a guided tour because they want to make sure that you aren't f***ing anything up. Unfortunately, the average human being tends to be incredibly destructive, especially when it comes to sites of cultural or scientific importance. Looking at you, Chinese tourists. As such, a treaty was signed in the 1950s by multiple global powers to ensure the well-being of Antarctica for its scientific and cultural importance to the human race. And while some of the member nations of this treaty do own territorial claims to the continent, we as a world decided to come together as one scientific community and use that untouched land for the sole purpose of research for the betterment of humankind. Or because they're hiding something from us down there. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe all of the governments in the world and the scientific community of the world has all gotten together and agreed to hide the fact that there's whatever or aliens, or a big hole that leads to a secret other world down there. Or maybe they're just digging at ice, looking at bacteria and stuff. It's definitely one of those two things. Did Admiral Byrd enter the hollow earth and meet with an Aryan race of super beings led by the Master? Did the men of Operation High Jump encounter alien technology? Or did they discover and destroy a secret Nazi base? Well, if you've been paying attention at all, you, you know how I feel about this. I'm pretty sure it was none of those things. I truly and honestly, based on everything that I've researched, and I have read thousands of pages on this subject, I truly believe it was just a training exercise for the Navy and Army in preparation for a potential war with the Soviet Union. Another potential benefit of Operation High Jump was staking a claim for the U.S. on the Antarctic continent, something that we didn't even do because we just stopped caring about it. Like, if there was the entrance to a secret world, don't you think that we would occupy the entire continent to the fullest extent of our capabilities with our military? We don't even own part of Antarctica. We send, like, a dozen scientists there a year to drill ice cores and look at fucking microscopic shit. Come on. And again, don't get me wrong, the government is up to a ton of shady sh**. And now that I'm thinking about it, if they came out tomorrow and were like, yeah, actually, uh, there are aliens down there, and that is the entrance to the hollow world, and, uh, yep, that's true, that happened. I, like, I, that wouldn't surprise me at all. I think Antarctica captures the human imagination in the same way that the bottom of the ocean and space do. It's so foreign and desolate and unforgiving and sterile and weird to us. It's just not a place where humans would go normally, so our mind fills it with monsters and mystery. I know a few people who've been to Antarctica. They all describe it exactly the same way. They say that it's beautiful and really eerie, like you're not supposed to be there. You just get that weird tingle on the back of your spine caveman feeling the whole time you're there. Is that because there's something that lurks there that our instincts tell us we should keep away from? Yeah, it's called the f***ing cold. Up until less than 100 years ago, you, you could not even go there without freezing to death. There's a reason no one lives there permanently. It f***ing sucks. I love conspiracies, the true ones and the silly ones. Like, here's one of the first books that I ever got. I was really young when I got this. I can't even remember. Uh, it's a British book. It's called The World's Greatest Mystery, Intrigue, and Suspense. Uh, some of the pages of it are hung up 
on the set behind me. I got this at a bookstore. Again, I was really young, like early elementary school probably. And there's a bunch of goofy shit in here. I mean, there's stories about like ghosts and the Loch Ness Monster. But this is what got me engaged in learning about the more realistic conspiracies and stories that are going on. The actual book itself sits behind me on the set too. But those weirder stories, things that may be going on, what lurks beyond, they're interesting, they're engaging, human curiosity takes over. Just use your critical thinking skills before you invest wholeheartedly in your belief in something. That is all I ask of you in all aspects of life. Do your own research, come to your own conclusions, and always remember, question everything. I've been King Trout, and as always, thank you for watching. Holy hell, you're still here? You must have really enjoyed it. Thank you. Warms the cockles of my heart. Uh, you can find me on kingtroutcomedy.com. I'm on all the social media platforms. I use them all very differently from each other. If you, uh, if you're subscribed to me on here and not any of the other ones, you are getting a different version of me than you would anywhere else. So, uh, yeah, if that's something that interests you, go ahead and, and check that out. But once again, thank you for watching. It's always a pleasure. I love making these things for you. Leave me a comment, you know, boost the algorithm. Like it and subscribe to me. Ring the bell, as they say. Uh, I don't know why you would, you know, want to be notified the second I post a video unless... Well, I suppose if you're just home and not doing anything. I don't know. Do what you want. But thanks again. Bye.